All right. So finally, London's calling. Yay! As you can already tell, Palm's very, very nervous, very excited. But let's do it. Let's do this. So uh, today I'm here with you to discuss about a topic that is not really a favorite for a lot of folks in the Salesforce space. And yes, uh, you might have guessed it, guessed it already. It's Apex testing. And to make it even lesser popular, <laughs> we are going to talk about writing tests for declarative or what better known as low code solutions. So to kick things off, uh, let's start with a quick introduction. I'm Narendra Singh and I work as a Salesforce developer in Berlin for a platinum consulting partner. I do everything and anything around Salesforce that I can find to work with. <laughs> And I'm also a Salesforce MVP and a part of Einstein's Champions program, which is now known as Platform Champions. I also blog about Salesforce stuff at forcepanda.wordpress.com. These are my Twitter and LinkedIn handles. Feel free to reach out. I'll be more than happy to engage, guys. So some of you might still be wondering, how does it really play out? All this Apex testing, flows, and code coverage. How? How really? Yeah, so I'm gonna ask you to hold on to that question and take you back in time to realize why testing is so important in software development in general. So uh, let's start with some facts. Fact one, uh, poor quality software cost organizations 2.8 trillion in the US alone. This fact was came from a research by CSIQ in 2018. Fact number two, more than 10,000 patients were at risk of being given the wrong medication after an NHS glitch was discovered, uh, discovered back in 2018. And some more fact for some more facts. According to Help Shift, 80% of the apps are deleted or uninstalled after first use. And the number one reasons for, reason for it is due to the app, app crashing or freezing or due to buggy interface. And that kind of makes sense. So yeah. So let's see how overall software testing helps us in, or basically what are the benefits of it? So in general, software testing helps you to make your application more secure and more performant. You can write, specific tests to run your application again against potential security issues and large data volumes. It also helps in ensuring better code quality. And not only that, you greatly reduce the time and cost, which is usually huge, spent fixing bugs and issues with the application after going live. And last but not the least, it also adds to the customer satisfaction as no one would be pleased to use a buggy application, of course. <laughs> so, but still you might be having a question for me that why <laughs> do we really need it for flows? And before you add anything else, let me ask you this. So my question to you is, uh, there is, as you can already see, there is a long process on the right. So I'm gonna ask you this, can you test this entire process for every flow version that you create or every process version that you create to ensure that your change is not going to break anything else. Now take a moment <laughs> and think about it. I don't think you can unless you, you are a superhuman. And believe me, it only gets more complex as your business expands and the org matures. So how can you really tackle this problem? So it's fairly simple. So just imagine how simple it would be if you already have a defined set of use cases that you can just run your process against just using few lines of code. Isn't that interesting? So, and with that, let's say hi to flow test code coverage. This is a S object which was announced in winter 19 and it's, at the moment, it's only available in access or accessible via tooling API. So basically this S object represents the test coverage for a flow or process given by an Apex method. So it has a bunch of fields, uh, namely Apex test class ID, which is the ID of the test class, which is basically testing or covering the flow, 
flow version ID, which is basically the version of the flow that is executed by the test method in your test class. And then you have two important fields and probably more important in terms of calculating your flow percentage is the number of elements that are covered by the test method and number of elements that are not covered by your test method. So with that, let's do some hands-on. To set up some context, I'm gonna switch to my org and let's talk about a flow that, a very simple flow. The flow basically, whenever a is executed, whenever, whenever a case is created, it queries all the existing cases on that parent account of that case. And if the number of cases are more, then we set a field on the parent account and we also notify the uh, owner of that particular case that, hey, uh, your customer is going crazy. You should please really look into those cases. And if not, and if it's if the number of open cases is less than five, then we simply set a field and we do not send any sort of alert. The field, the name of the field, if you want to check, is how is the customer feeling? So if you have more than five cases, then the, cust then the field would be set to, you might lose your job. And if the number of cases are less than five, then we would simply say the customer is feeling good, hopefully. All right, and then this process is being, then this flow is being called by a process that I have, which runs on when an account is created, and the account ID is not null. So let's verify that quickly and then we'll see how we can write some tests for it. So I'm just checking the account ID and I'm calling the flow. Fairly simple. Now let's see how we can really test uh, this flow and this process. So as you would imagine, we are since talking about Apex, so here comes the Apex class, which is a test class and I have three methods. Uh, one is create data where I'm just creating a bunch of accounts and cases. And then I have two test methods, one which kind of tests, tests the use case where we have more than five cases getting created. And the other is when we have less than five case, cases getting created. So let's take a look at more than five cases test method. I'll just expand everything. So now I'm just querying the account ID, which already has more, already has five cases related to it. And then I simply create a new case on that account. And I'm just doing an assertion on the field, which is how's the customer feeling. And I'm checking that it should contain, you might lose your job. If not, then I'm simply throwing a message, a assertion message. So yeah, that's basically it. And the in the other test called less than five cases test, I'm creating creating a new account with a new case. So basically it has only one case. So the field that should be the how the field should be set as good, hopefully. So that's what we are doing in our assertions. So let's quickly run our tests and see how it goes. So the Apex tests, tests were successful. As you can see, both the message, both are our test methods passed. But <laughs> the question is, how do we figure out the code coverage? And this is where your flow test coverage, the S object that we just talked about comes into the picture. So let's see how we can query that information. Before that, I would just like to show you how you can just do queries and how it would look like when we want to just query the information on flow test coverage. So you can specify the name of the class or you can also specify the name of the method in your where clause of your SQL query and use tooling API to do the queries and get the results. So let's do the same for our use case. And I'm gonna switch back to my VS code 
and here I have a query which gets gets all the elements or basically the flow test coverage. So let's do this query, execute. Hopefully this is the right one. Let's see. As you can see, I'm all I'm setting two filters on my Sockle query. Uh, one is the Apex test class name, and the other is flow version master label. All right, so we have the results. Congratulations, nice. All right, so these are the test methods that we are really concerned about. This is just a test setup method. It still runs the flow, but uh, that's not something where we are doing the actual assertions. So we are only concerned about these ones. So more than five cases test. So if we go back to our flow and we see if we have more than five, the number of elements that get executed are this, 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 and this. So that counts to total of five elements. And that's what we see in the list, that the number of elements covered by the test is five and the number of elements not covered by the test is one. On the other hand, if we look at the test, which has less than five cases, we see that the number of elements that are covered by the test are four, and the number of elements that are not covered by the tests are two. So basically you can also get the total just by adding them and you can calculate your flow, uh, calculate the coverage for that specific flow. Uh, but there is more to this story and we will see in a bit how. <laughs> So now that we are done, we have the test, we have the flows. Now we want to deploy them with some code coverage into our production. And for the sake of security issues, I made a short video uh, just to, yeah, avoid security issues as I already said. So let's take a look at the video and enjoy the, enjoy the video. And then I'll go, we will switch back and we will discuss the rest of the story. Hey, what's up? I'm Narendra Singh too, and hope you are enjoying the sessions and having a lovely day. I'm here to show you how you can deploy your processes and flows with Apex tests. So let's take a look. Oh, wait. I have to put on my swag. Because this is the only time I get to show it off. All right. So the first step in the process is to open your process automation settings in your production org. On the settings page, scroll down to the very bottom and check the deploy processes and flows as active checkbox. In addition, we would also need to set a minimum test coverage percentage to pass when deploying our flows or processes as active. However, if you deploy your flow as inactive, you would still be able to deploy them without having any code coverage. So let's set a minimum value of 75% as standard and we are all set to proceed with the deployment. I am now going to switch over to my sandbox where I have two chain sets. One is without the apex test and the other is with the apex test for the flow and process we want to deploy. To save us some time, I already uploaded them both to the production. So let's switch over and try and validate them. So here are the uploaded chain sets and I'm going to start with the one without Apex test and let's see what we get. Here I am on the detail page of my chain set and you can see in the list of components, we do not have any Apex class. So let's hit validate. I'm going to specify here a test class so we can avoid running all the unnecessary existing Apex tests for this validation. 
so test data factory validate run let's navigate to the deployment status page let's see what as expected the validation failed but let us see why so the error says test coverage of active processes and auto launch flows is zero but at least 75 percent is required basically what this means is your org must have a code coverage of at least 75 percent for all the active processes and auto launch flows present in your org so now let's head over to the other change set the one with apex test and see if we can get some success with that so here i am on my chain set with the apex test and you can see we have a test class that we wrote test of our flow and the process now to validate this i'll specify this apex test to run in order to save us some time so let's hit validate specify the test validate okay wait for it wait for it It failed so did I just messed up my demo or was it something I was already expecting hello to answer that question for you I'm gonna hand it back over to virtual Narendra one who is on the other side of this video so uh, let's see what just happened so we had the test for the flow that we wanted to deploy but it still failed so the base criteria in order to deploy any active process to over to production is that you must have at least a code coverage of 75 percent for the existing active processes and auto launch flows that you have in your org so if you if you notice we in this case we did achieve some coverage because we had a test running specifically for one flow that we wanted to deploy so that basically gave us some coverage in the in that sense but that's not enough so basically if you want to start and adapt to this form of deploying your flows with apex tests you would have to first write apex tests tests to cover all the existing flows and active processes to make sure you are able to deploy and you also you have to make sure that you the code coverage is above 75 percent all right so the question now is what flow types can be now tested with this so we have process builder uh, which can be tested by apex yes we have auto launch flows which also can be now tested with apex record triggered flows which are essentially auto launch flows in a sense so they also can be tested and screen flows uh, so here is the thing uh, screen flows cannot be really uh, tested with apex because it doesn't make sense because you have screens and you cannot really verify the input somehow so uh, in order to tackle that what you can do is use modular flows uh, basically subflows to test the specific logics of your application that you are trying to build with flows in addition we also have scheduled flows and uh, platform event flows for that flow for those flows at least not for scheduled flows you can do this but you should be able to write tests for um, flows that are triggered by platform events however for scheduled flows there is a really nice workaround that you can simply create an entire flow which is which you can use a sub you can use as a subflow in your scheduled flow so that way you can basically test all the logic 
for that you want to test all right with that some bonus of course almost forgot so uh, let's say uh, if you want to test a flow and you are not sure which of the elements are getting covered by the apex test method that you have in in the test you can use the flow element test coverage object this is also accessible only via tooling api please remember and you can just query that information and you can check which elements were covered by your by your apex test method also how do you calculate the flow test coverage so the overall test coverage calculating the overall test coverage of your flow is a bit tricky but in in simple words all you need to do is uh, just divide the count of number of all latest flow versions that have code coverage by the sum of number of all active versions with or without test coverage plus all inactive versions that are the latest version and have code coverage so that's that's kind of a tricky formula but uh, you can find that information well written in the docs which i'll share the link in the my resources section and also i would like to bring your attention to a known issue related to flow test coverage so make sure to check it out if you have any kind of if you are running into any kind of issues while cal calculating your flow test coverage and with that here are the resources that you can use uh, uh, the link to the tooling api doc as object details and how you can calculate the test coverage for your flows and with that thank you so much <laughs> for having me at london london's calling team and thank you so much audience you have been amazing thank you